All right. So the last uh, we left off is talking about uh, conditional probability and talking about the probability of A and B happening together. So the probability that A and B happens, well, we would have to have A happen and we need to have B happen at the same time that A happens. So that's why this probability of B given A is here. Because we need both A to happen. And if I know that A happens, I also need B to happen. So I don't just need to think about B happening. I need to think about B and A happening together. So that's how B given A covers it. So we're going to look at uh, this probability here. Pew Internet and American Life Project finds that 93% of teenagers use the internet and that 55% of online teens have posted a profile on a social networking site. And so we're asking what percent of teens are online and have posted a profile? And so this is going to be, uh, we can have O for online and uh, P for profile. And we could say uh, the probability of O and P, that's what we're finding. And so we can use the formula. times the probability of P given O. Like that would be the formula. But let's use a little bit of a different way to visualize it. And what we're gonna use is what's called a tree diagram. And the tree diagram is basically going to uh, branch off these possibilities and give us a better visual of the conditional probabilities. So, Next time I'm gonna have you make it, but this time I'm just gonna show you what the tree diagram looks like. Here it comes. So we're selecting the teenager. Are they online? Yes is 0.93 and no is 0.07. Right, that's reflecting the fact that 93% of teenagers use the internet. So that's using this number. And we're putting it right there for yes, they're online. And that means the percent that aren't online is one minus the percent that they are. Then we're using the 55% of online teens have a profile. So that goes off of out of those that are online, do you have a profile or not? So that's where the 55% goes. So we're basically branching off the possibilities of this happening. And you'll notice that we have zero and one. That's because if you're not online, then it's impossible for you to have a profile. So it's certain that you're not gonna have a profile. Sometimes these will have their own separate probabilities, but in this case, probability here is zero, probability here is one. And so the tree diagram lets you see if we want the online and posting a profile, then the probability that we're looking for is right here, this probability. Online, yes, profile, yes. And so to find each of these probabilities in the tree diagram, we would just multiply them together. So here's the formula. There's the numbers pulled out of the tree diagram that we'd be multiplying. So 
So this will give you the percentages of everybody, 0.5115. And then we have the percent of teens that are online and have not posted a profile. So just to complete out this tree diagram, we would take 0.93 times 0.45. And that would give us 0.4185. In other words, the 0.4185 is not just our percentage of the uh, of the people who are online that have the profile. So this is a conditional probability. This is saying out of the people that are online, how many of them have a profile? This is out of all teenagers, how many are online and have a profile? And then we would multiply these together. This would be zero. This would be 0.07. And the idea here is that this should cover all of my possibilities. These four uh, probabilities multiplied out in the diagram. So if I add these probabilities together, I should get one. So that's the idea behind this problem. Any questions on that? All right, let's look at the next problem then. Oh, no, no. What I want, I don't want that either. Okay. Let's move on to, I'm jumping ahead a few slides, uh, but I want to move on to talk about uh, independence. So just to recap the idea here, independent means that A and B, uh, A doesn't depend on B. So that means that knowing A happens doesn't have any effect on B happening. So in this case, here's an example of some independent events. These are a little bit easier of uh, probabilities. The failure of O-ring jo joints in the shuttle's booster rockets was to blame. Under conditions, it was estimated that the probability that an individual joint would function properly was 0.997. So assuming these happen independently, what is the probability of all six functioning properly? So we're saying here's the probability of a single ring working, 0.997. So the probability that all six are gonna function properly, well, in order for all six to function properly, the first one has to work, and the second one has to work, and the third one has to work, and the fourth one has to work, and the fifth one has to work, and guess what? The sixth one has to work. So remember the idea that or probabilities like we looked at last week, we're going to add and and probabilities, we're going to end up multiplying. So we're just going to multiply the first working times the second working times the third working. And since these are all independent, this 0.977 stays the probability. So it's going to be the 0 0.997 times 0 0.997 times 0 0.997 uh, and so on six times. So that's going to be 0 0.997 to the sixth power, which is about 0.87. So those are a couple of examples here. Uh, of independence and uh, working through our 
uh, tree diagrams here. And so I want to give you guys the chance to try uh, some of these yourself. And so I'm going to go to uh, one of these slides that I kind of skipped over. And I want to go back to them. So with that information, what I want you to do is I want you to try uh, this example. Probability that an HIV test gives a false positive is 0 0.004. If a clinic tests 200 people on a given day who do not have HIV, what is the probability that a false positive will occur? So we're looking for the probability that we have a false positive. And I want to give you a minute. To think about this. and see if you can come up with our strategy behind how we're going to get this probability. We wanna think about how can at least one false positive, how can this happen? So I'll give you a minute to think about it. So if we wanna think about the probability of at least one false positive, then we have a a whole lot of possibilities to think about because we could have one false positive, we could have two false positives, we could have three false positives. And so that's a lot of possibilities to walk through and kind of digest here. And so we're going to have an easier way to think about this. If you see the phrase If you see the phrase at least one, then a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time, if your possibility involves at least one, then it's going to be easier most of the time to find one minus the probability of none. Because finding the probability of at least one means you have to find the probability of one or the probability of two or the probability of three all the way up to 200. Versus the probability of none of the things happening is much easier, only one possibility and usually a pretty straightforward one. So we have one minus, well, what's the probability of no false positives? If we have no false positives, that means that the first person doesn't have a false positive and the second person doesn't have a false positive and the third person doesn't have a false positive and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth all the way up to the 200. Well, these test results are going to be independent of each other. And so the probability of a single false positive is 0 0.004. So the probability of not having a false positive is going to be 1 minus that. 0 .0, 1 minus 0 0.004 is going to be 0.996. And since all 200 people need to not have a false positive, we're going to have 0.996 to the 200th. So that's our idea. Instead of finding the probability of at least one false positive, we want the probability of, take one minus the probability of none. Uh, 0.996 to the 200th is 0.449. And so one minus that is going to be 
0.551. So more likely than not, in this group of 200, uh, we're going to have a false positive. All right, next example here that I want you to take a look at and try here. So it's going to say uh, example on page 320. Uh, so I'm going to get to 320 and help you out with that. So Again, I believe 2009, so keep that in mind. Video sharing sites led by YouTube are popular destinations on the internet. If you didn't know that. Um, and they're looking only at uh, uh, adults this time. Last time we were looking at teenagers, this time we're looking at adults. So, of the internet users, About, uh, we have uh, 18 to 29. That's going to be 27%. We have 30 to 49. That is 45%. And the remaining 28% are 50 and old, 50 and over. 50 plus is going to be 28%. The Pure Internet American Life Project finds that 70% of internet users aged 18 to 29 had visited a video sharing site, along with 51% of those aged 30 to 49 and 26% of those aged 50 or over. Do most internet users visit YouTube and similar sites? So use, uh, use YouTube. We have 70% of these. We have 51% of these. And we have 26% of these. And so I'm going to start the tree diagram for you and see if you can finish it. So first off, we're going to start over here on the far left side with adults. And then we're going to split them up into the three categories we just found. We have 18 to 29. We have 30 to 49. And we have 50 and over. And so we're going to write down those uh, proportions. We've got 0.27. We have 0.45. And we have 0.28. And then our next category, which is what I want you to try, is do they use video sharing sites? So 
So you're going to have branches coming off of here that will say, do they use video sharing sites? So I want to give you a minute to see if you can come up with these uh, proportions that go in e on each of these branches. And then on the ends of the branches, you're going to multiply these two probabilities to uh, get the things that go on the far right side of the branch. So I'm going to give you about two minutes and see what you can come up with. So now that we have these probabilities from here, we can multiply to get our ends of the branches. And so I'm going to go ahead and multiply and write those out. Remember that these are uh, these are probabilities. These are and probabilities. So the one I'm about to write down, this 0.51 times the 0.45, this is the probability that they are 30 to 49 and use the video sharing site. This is the probability that they're 30 to 49 and don't have used the video sharing site. And all of these probabilities, if you do this tree diagram right, if you add up all the probabilities together, then these should add up to one. Because this is all the possibilities that we have. Here's all the age brackets that we looked at, and here's all the possibilities of whether they use YouTube or not. And so these are all the different probabilities. So now we are interested in visit video sharing sites. So all I need to do now is to say, who are the ones that visit the video sharing sites? Well, the ends of the branches that visit the video sharing sites are here, here, and here. Those are the three groups that use those video sharing sites. So those are my three probabilities. Here it is written out in uh, our more technical notation. And so they're either in this group or this group or this group, or that means we're going to add those together, which gives me a total of 0.4913. So we get 49.13% using the video sharing site.